Now it's time to do some cool stuff with that navigation bar. And that is we want to do what's called type ahead on this search function. So that is if I type out try Django or try Angular or new item, whatever, it's going to give me some suggestions on what those things are. And then we'll be able to click them and it will take us to them. So to do this, we are gonna be using UI Bootstrap. I know I mentioned that we probably wouldn't use this. We're not gonna go into too much depth here. Really, we're gonna be using the one directive that is type ahead. Now, of course, there's all kinds of other directions, like there's stuff for buttons, um, there's stuff for the carousel, um, also collapse, all sorts of things here, right? But um, we're gonna be going off of type ahead and we're not actually gonna be going directly off of this. We already have done some tests that is gonna be using a lot of the things that are on here, but it's not gonna be exactly the things that are on here. So that is something that we'll be doing right now. Now to get this started, we wanna actually go back to the top and we wanna download this. So we're gonna download the minified version um, or we can download the minified version. So I download it and notice that I see that I include the templates I see that it says UI Bootstrap TP LS, and I can actually use that, or I can type in Angular UI CDN in Google, CDN as in Content Delivery Network, and I can just click on this one, and notice that I have a few options, and the TP LS is the one that I'm gonna go off of. So that basically, I believe, includes the templates. So I think that's what TP LS stands for, is templates. That seems likely. Where the other ones don't have templates, that's what I'm guessing. So that's what we're actually gonna end up doing is we're gonna be using the CDN version like we have with other things. And I'm gonna put it below the CDN version of our other items that we've used. So now that we've got that there, we let's go ahead and see how we actually install it. And notice it says UI Bootstrap. That's what we're gonna actually add into our module. Something that you do wanna note is we're using the one for Angular 1.5. There is an Angular 2 version, but that is not the one we are going off of. So if for some reason this URL changed, definitely just search Angular UI Bootstrap 1.5 or Angular JS UI Bootstrap. And it should bring you somewhere to this depending on when you look at it. All right, going back into Sublime Text, we're gonna jump into our module and we're just gonna add in UI Bootstrap into the module list. There we go. And now what I wanna do is open up that try nav directive because this is where we're gonna be doing it. So the try nav directive as well as the try nav HTML button. And we're gonna be updating this input here. So this input is where we're doing the type ahead. But before we actually do that, what are we going to be typing ahead? What are we gonna be searching? And for us, we're gonna keep it nice and simple and all I'm gonna search are the blog items. So every blog item that actually exists, that what we're gonna be using with. So we're gonna be using the post module. That means in our try nav module, we wanna import the post module by adding it in to the try nav module. And then in the directive, we're just gonna add in the post here. And I'm also gonna add in location. This will make sense once we get to it, but basically we want to have some sort of function that will change it to any given location. All right, so now that I've got this, let's go ahead and look at what I need to do. First of all, I wanna add a scope here and we're gonna call it items. Now this is very similar to what we've seen before with our blog list. So in the blog list, we have our scope items here now, of course, we could do this same sort of thing, the query and setting it up like this. We could, we wouldn't want to do the columns. We don't need to chunk it at all, but we do want to use these scope items like we have in here. So scope items.data. So this right here is what we're going to be kind of emulating inside of our directive. So I'm just going to do post.query. That's what I'm going to leave it as. Um, of course, there's other things on how we can clean this up a little bit, but that's where we're going to leave it. So that's the actual items. And then I'm gonna to want to actually do something when I select one of these items. So we are gonna, I'm gonna leave it commented out for now, but I'll do scope dot, um, let's say select item, and it's gonna be equal to a function. So that's what we wanna 
eventually work towards. So in that function, that's where it's gonna actually do the navigation for us, that is bring us to that individual blog. So now that we've got this, let's actually put get the type ahead working inside of this input. Now, the first thing I wanna do is actually add a uh, an actual ng model to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just space these things out a little bit so I can see it a little bit cleaner. So I'll say ng-model equals to, and I'm gonna call this search query. Not to get it confused with any sort of other model, if there is a possibility of confusing it with other model, search query is likely not gonna do that, right? We That's likely gonna be our general search query. Now what we wanna do is uib-type ahead equals to, and this is where we do our iterations here. So this also you can look at the documentation for. So in the directives of type ahead, we can see the examples of each one. So the very basic ones at the top, notice it says UI type ahead and then it's state for states and states, filter, blah, blah, blah. So what's going on here is we wanna actually set a variable. So for us, it's gonna be post, and then it's gonna be for post in items, cause we called the context items. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna still do that same filter and the limit to. So let's add those in, filter and limit to. Okay, so post, we'll see what this does in a second, but items itself, Let's go ahead and look at that module, the directive itself. So items is the scope. So if we called this posts, we could we would have to come back and change this right here. But we'll keep it as items. And these two are, this is the object and this is a variable. So we're setting some variable here and then we're using that variable here. And I'll show you what that does in just a second. This will be the actual object, but this is the actual iteration. So it's similar to like the ng repeat, but it, we added uh, just one other element, which is this post four. Okay, so the final thing is we can do type ahead dash on dash select, and we can actually run some sort of function here. So the function being, we called it select item. So let's uncomment this out now, and it's select item, and we're gonna wanna have our actual item come through here. So I'm gonna say item model and label. So these things are gonna be passed by default. So I'm gonna just console log each one of these. First off, the item, console log, the model, console log, the label. Okay, so we've got that. And in my blog list, I know that there is this other console, or excuse me, um, we had a console log in our blog list for watch function. So let's go ahead and comment that out as well. Um, just so we don't see any other console items coming through. Okay, and now back into the HTML. We want to actually have this select item function on here, and we want to pass all of those things that we just had. So item, model, and label. Okay, so this is how it works. This is actually set up now for type ahead. Let's go into Angular and try it out. We'll do new item. Notice it says object dot object, or excuse me, object object. So this is actually the object itself. And that's because of this right here. So if I change this to post dot ID and refresh and type out new item, it's gonna show me that ID, right? So that's essentially what it's showing me. If I did post dot title, then it should show me that title. So new item, and there it is. So another thing that I can do here is I could change this to let's just say item, and then you just called it item.title, right? New item, still there. But also if I type out anything else like T, it gives me all of the T ones and everything in there, which is really pretty cool. Um, so now what we need to do is finish off that function. So if I say new item and, and actually press on it here, let's see what it does. We're gonna inspect the element there console and we just get new item and as well as a resource. So let's go back into our directive and I'm going to, actually let's refresh it one more time and just do new item, click it once and then we see resource is the first one, new item, new item are the second two. So item itself is the ng resource. So that's the resource from the post query. So what that means is we can do 
location dot path and then we can do our link so blog plus item dot id save that we refresh now if we do new item and i click on it it takes me to that new item notice i have to click on it but something else that we might note is the search query doesn't go away it actually stays there um, this is okay because if we look at the model itself it is search query so all we have to do here is change scope dot search query to an empty query so let's go back and try a new item again click on it and notice that search goes away um, that's really good so now it actually is working um, there is one more step that we might want to think about here and that is with the form so the actual form if i click on submit here nothing happens if i type new item and not click that but click submit it doesn't go anywhere now the reason type ahead can work really well sometimes if I click on this, that should actually take me directly to the item. Whereas if I type and actually search new item and hit submit, it shouldn't take me anywhere. It should actually take me to a search, but we aren't gonna set up that search. We're just gonna do ng submit and we're gonna make a, another one and we'll say search query or search item, let's say search item. And then we'll pass in well, we really just need that model. So search item as ng submit will should work fine for us. So let's go back into our direct directive and do scope dot search item equals to the function. And then in here, I'm just going to console log the scope dot search query. And you could also have this location set up where it's going to go location path. And then this time we would do question mark query equals to that search query. So instead of the item itself, it would actually go to something like this. This is this is something where we might be able to have it work. So let's actually try it out. I'll try it again. I'll do new item and I'll just hit enter this time. Notice it doesn't change anything. So if I go new item, pressing enter actually goes to that selected one. Where if I did that T again and press down, it will actually go down and I can actually select one of those. I get a little error here, which we'll come back to, but let's try new item again and just hit submit. And now it takes me to blog and then takes me to this other place, right? It's not actually searching it for us. It seems like it was going to, but this doesn't, this didn't work. Notice it, it escaped out everything. So we want to just change that real quick by simply, we'll get rid of this, put a period here, or excuse me, parentheses, period, search, Q, comma, and then that's, scope search query. This actually adds that git request or the git parameter inside of that location path search. So if I refresh again and do new new item and hit submit, it now does an actual search there. Um, so there's a few things that I need to do and that is update my blog list. So the list elements there. So if I click on blog or search something, it actually does search what I need to search. Um, that Those are the things that I still need to do but new item now works. So we now have type ahead working and it's actually bringing us where we want to go that is to that particular blog item. Okay, so there's still some things that we want to clean up, but that is the UI bootstrap. That That is something that I thought was really good for you guys to check out, um, really because it's, it's pretty useful and you do see that type ahead used a lot. Now, something that is important to note is you can have the type ahead have no results, right? So if no results are showing, it can do some stuff there. So ng show no results, that sort of stuff. Um, but you can also have loading. So if there's actual loading, like as in you have like an HTTP request and it's it's the server is actually loading, so doing an AJAX loading, you can actually show some stuff there as well, which this kind of shows you that example. But again, we can't really simulate that here because we don't have a server that we actually have set up to, to do the simulation. Um, all right, so if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.